I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Good morning and welcome to Trinity Church, to our beautiful chapel this morning for this service of morning prayer. My name is the Reverend Peggy Hodgkins, and I will be using this book, the Book of Common Prayer, for the morning prayer service, which begins on page 80. But first, on our church calendar, we remember Clement, who was the Bishop of Rome around the year 100. So let's think about who Clement was and why is he important to our church calendar. Well, according to early church traditions, Clement was a disciple of the apostles and the third bishop of Rome. He is generally regarded as the author of a letter written about the year 96 from the church in Rome to the church in Corinth and known as First Clement in the collection of early documents called the Apostolic Fathers. The occasion of the letter was the action of a younger group at Corinth who had deposed the elder clergy because of a dissatisfaction with their ministrations. The unity of the church was being jeopardized by a dispute over its ministry. Clement's letter sets forth a hierarchical view of church authority, It insists that God requires due order in all things, that the deposed clergy must be reinstated, and that the legitimate superiors must be obeyed. The letter used the terms bishop and presbyter interchangeably, presbyter means priest or presider, to describe the higher ranks of clergy, but refers to some of them as rulers of the church. It is they who lead its worship and offer the gifts of the Eucharist, just as the duly appointed priests of the Old Testament performed the various sacrifices and liturgies in their time. Many congregations of the early church read this letter in their worship, and several ancient manuscripts included in the canonical books of the New Testament, along with a second letter, which is actually an early homily of unknown authorship. The text of First Clement was lost to the Western Church in the Middle Ages and was not rediscovered until 1628. Clement writes, The apostles received the gospel for us from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was sent from God. Thus, Christ is from God and the apostles from Christ. In both instances, the orderly procedure depends on God's will. So thereafter, when the apostles had been given their instructions and all their doubts had been set at rest by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, they went forth in the confidence of the Holy Spirit to preach the good news of the coming of God's kingdom. They preached in country and city and appointed their first converts after testing them by the Spirit to be the bishops and deacons of future believers. And so we remember Clement, Bishop of Rome, around the year 100. Let us pray. Almighty God, you chose your servant, Clement of Rome, to recall the church in Corinth to obedience and stability. Grant that your church may be grounded and settled in your truth, by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Reveal to it what is not yet known. Fill up what is lacking. Confirm what has already been revealed and keep it blameless in your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us... uh, Now begin with the service of morning prayer. We turn to the Book of Common Prayer, also found online, bcponline.org, to page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. 
Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molted the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 106, found in your prayer book on page 741. Hallelujah, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord or show forth all his praise? To cast out the seed among the nations and to scatter them throughout the lands. They join themselves to Baal Peor. I'm sorry, (laughs) I turned the wrong page. Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people and visit me with your saving help that I may see the prosperity of your elect and be glad with the gladness of your people that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned as our forebears did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt, They did not consider your marvelous works, nor remember the abundance of your love. They defied the Most High at the Red Sea, but he saved them for his name's sake to make his powers known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up, and he led them through the deep as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of those who hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The waters covered their oppressors, Not one of them was left. Then they believed his words and sang him songs of praise. But soon they forgot his deeds and did not wait for his counsel. A craving seized them in the wilderness, and they put God to to the test in the desert. He gave them what they asked, but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses in the camp and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed Datan and covered the company of Abiram. Fire blazed up against their company and flames devoured the wicked. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Our reading for this Monday morning is from the letter of Paul to the Galatians, chapter 6, verses 1 to 10. Brothers and sisters, If someone is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual should restore him or her in a spirit of gentleness. Look to yourself, too, lest you be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each man will have to bear his own load. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a person sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. 
But he who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle this morning is a song of praise, the Benedictus S. Domine, canticle 13, found on page 90. Glory to you, God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our gospel reading this morning is from Luke chapter 18, verses 15 to 30. Now the people were bringing even infants to Jesus that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked the people. But Jesus called them in saying, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And a ruler asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And the young man said, All these I have observed from my youth. And when Jesus heard it, he said to him, One thing you still lack. Sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But when the young man heard this, he became very sad, for he was very rich. Jesus, looking at him, said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this said, Then who can be saved? But he said, What is impossible with humans is possible with God. And Peter said, Lo, we have left our homes and followed you. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not receive manifold more in this time and in the age to come eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us sing uh, the song of Mary on page 91. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. 
From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I think if we reflect on the gospel for a few moments, we see that Jesus embraces the littlest ones, the most powerless ones, children. Even babies were being brought to him. And during this pandemic time, I'm thinking of how very hard it is to be at home 24-7 in a, in a lockdown situation with tiny little babies and not being able to get very much done. And it's easy to set aside their needs over our own. But we remember these words of Jesus, let the children come to me and remember how precious they are and that we have to be like a child to enter into the kingdom of God. I ask your prayers today for young mothers and fathers who are caring for the littlest ones. Pray for patience for them, for courage to keep on keeping on in their duty as loving parents. Give them strength, give them fortitude, give them an abiding sense of your presence. Give them hope that this time too shall pass and uh, let us love one another and remember the abundant love with which God gives us. For Jesus Christ's sake, amen. Now we'll turn to the Apostles' Creed found in your prayer book on page 96. Page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. And we'll pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. 
Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. The collect for this week of Proper 29, the last week of the Pentecost season, and the week of Christ the King Sunday. Almighty and ever-living God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth divided and enslaved by sin may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for mission. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And today we will also pray the prayer of St. Francis, which is found in your prayer book on page 833. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Today we offer our prayers, our intercessions, and thanksgivings, remembering those on Trinity's prayer list, Judy Nessel, Bert McKee, Kathy, Don Callahan, Little Harrison, Brad Olson, who had leg surgery, Steve J., Farrar Mansfield, Joanne Garten, Whitney, Chris, Isabel Cortese, John Rogers, Rachel, Nancy Long, Patria and Peter Swan, Lindsay Hunt, Margie Fowler, Robert, Adam DeVenere, Lisa Favarini, Drew Lipner, Kathy, John, Claudia, Sean Sullivan, Janet, and Tom. We pray for all those around the world who suffer from the coronavirus. We pray for the frontline workers who are caring for them in overcrowded hospitals, in nursing homes, in medical facilities. We ask that you would strengthen them, Lord, to keep serving, 
Help them to care for themselves with sleep and rest and good food and the support of family and friends. We pray that you would bless first responders, that you would bless the families and caregivers of the sick. We pray for all who suffer from grief or any other adversity. We pray for an end to this virus, Lord, if it is your will. We pray that you would help us to keep others safe by watching our behaviors. Help us to have compassion for those who might potentially get the virus from us and help others to be aware that they might pass it on to others and just help us to protect the wider good through our actions. We pray for the departed, all those who have died. Receive them into your glory, O Lord. And now I invite us into a couple of minutes of silent time marked by the ringing of the bell. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the blessing of God Almighty, our, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Creator, our Redeemer and Sanctifier, be among you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.
have a wonderful day.